I feel like if you live with a friend and everything is going well all the time, yeah. one of you is not living authentically. In what way do you feel like us living together influence your growth as a person? You were one of the people that's very instrumental in like showing up for people, not your people. Heart on the table, like, not, not soul even heart, on your body, table, everything, everything on just the table, just on the table, speaking like... from your soul. <laughs> Wombs was on some. I don't owe you any money. It you was like time. five months out, and this baby is texting me saying, "Hey, hon, I think you owe me some council tax." <laughs> I was thinking, "What council tax do I owe you? <laughs> Leave me alone." I was immensely fearful of living alone because I've struggled with low mood, I struggled with depression, I struggled with anxiety and I was just really worried about what living alone would like do to me. I would be upset about things and mm. I just wouldn't say anything. Like, I don't want to leave this place and us not have the same level of friendship. Our relationship grew immensely mm. from that experience. But I intentionally never spoke about that guy. Well, like, we'll really? back and forth and we'll be like, <laughs> well, <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of The Wummy Bello Show. I am so excited for today's conversation. I always say that one of the greatest ways of getting to like a different level of yourself or understanding life from like a different lens is through experiences. Now, an experience that really morphed me into where I am right now and who I'm becoming and so on and so forth is when I lived with my friend, a fellow content creator who goes by the name Uche Notori. Hello. She is in the building today. She's in the building today and we are going to be talking about the reality of living with a friend. How does it work? What happens? How does it evolve you? What are the conflicts that you have to come together and handle? How do we handle it? How do you navigate it in essence is what we are going to be talking about today. And the great thing is we're both creators. So this conversation is about to be very heavy on all things creation, on all things evolving, on all things growing and all that great stuff that we love so much. So yes, my girl Uche, base queen is in the building today. Hello. Hello Thanks girl. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. We're in matching PJs today. Gang, gang, My whole gang. thought process was like, you know what, I want to create a vibe that feels like familiar to... It was like home. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we used to wear matching PJs, but... Not we would one be, day. Not one day, together. by the way, but not we would day. we would be like in a living room, kind of just like in our PJs. But actually, dancing, oh, you weren't there. I did matching day. PJs with, with me and my friends for Maria, when we did a surprise. Oh, yeah. I, no, Maria. I was, remember, I wouldn't come But you that, didn't but wear the matching PJs. Yeah, yeah, but you I came there, yeah, into yeah, the room yeah. that day. But that was cute. Yeah, a little match. I love a little matching vibe. I do too. This it's is very cute. cute. All right, so before we get into the conversation, we're going to play a little game. You know how it goes. A little yes, bit of ma'am. this or that. Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to ask you, and it's also going to be for me too. You're going to love this first one. Cheers. Young Blue. Oh. Or Asha Care. Who we pick it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Just based on the strength of the past year, I'm going to wear Ashaka. Okay. I love me some young blue, but yeah. if we look at my Spotify history at the moment, it's, it's giving Ashaka. very much Ashaka was dominating the past year. No, for sure. But yeah. we had a season. Young blue was very We much. did have 20, a season. 2020? 2021? 2021, young we blue. We were deep in our young blue. Like, don't play Every him. day. Lit night in or night out? Or oh, no, lit night in. Hey, God, lit night or night in? Right, night in. Because I was thinking, <laughs> what? babe, what are you talking about? Night in. Night in. Night in. You know I'm an indoor. Girl. I'm an indoor kind of vibe. What? Get me a movie, get me some takeout, a little cozy vibe. That's where I'm at. I think I'm kind of like in the middle. No. It depends. Inside. For me. For me. Oh, no, you, no, you're definitely I'm kind outside. Of like in the middle. No, you, I think you, I'm, I'm more in the middle ish now. No, I would say you're very much more like, you're a very social being. I am, but yeah. I do be, in order for me to be a better social being, I need time, please. I need to run away from everybody. Really but in the choice between being inside go. and outside, I feel like you pick outside. Cause I think I'm coming I think back. I feel music. like I'm coming, yes. Okay, so I'm coming back outside now. Yeah. I think I had a minute where I was just like, I inside, don't, yeah, don't yeah. want to see many people yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. But yeah. I think, yeah, you're For right. sure, actually, no, that's true. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Chilled outfit or dressed up? Chill. You know I'm on my chill. Dressed up. Dressed up for you always. Always. Heels for you always. I'm a go. Put yeah. the dress on I'm right a now. tracksuit, little cheeky scarf. Yeah. Little jogger. Baggy and jacket. Baggy jacket, a crop hat. tee, big hat. <laughs> that is, yeah. Charleston memories or Kent memories? Oh, oh. Yours is going to be Kent memories. I was about to say Charlton. Really? You were so young then though. I was young, but do you remember I used to say like, uh, other people in my primary school also lived there. Okay. But I think Kent, because it's more like, it's more similar to what I am now. Mm. See, I think people see when they're like, yeah, you're a Kent babe. Just for some context, I'm sure people are probably watching and thinking, what's Charlton, what's Kent? So that's an area that we both kind of lived in. Yeah. Which kind of takes us perfectly into maybe the first part of the conversation of how we actually managed to live together. Yeah. Because we always say that it was kind of destiny yeah. that we lived together because yeah. 
when we moved in, so interesting stories, when we moved into the flat, <laughs> we had a day where, was it that I was reading over my letters or something like that? One thing about you, I was reading. Was I reading my letters? Those something. The something letters had happening. piled up, and I was okay. And, and I was went going to collect them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, my mum's house. house. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I came home one day, and I, so I came I'm home. very nosy. So and so I was she like, saw. Ooh. She was like, "Ooh, I'm very. What's I'm this? so nosy." She was like, "What's this?" Yeah. When she was like, "Why does that address say that?" Or something. Yeah, like that. Was yeah. Like, Why does that address say that? And I was like, "Oh, that's my mum's house. Yeah. Like, that's where I used to live." He was like, "No, you didn't." Long story short, that basically is where Uche used to live as well. Yeah. When I first, so I was born in Nigeria. So when I first. Um, came over to the UK. Funnily enough, we actually live, this is like real humble beginnings. Yeah. So when we first came, like moved to the UK from Nigeria, we lived above uh, dry cleaners and the dry cleaners was actually in Woolwich, which mm. I later then went on to live in Woolwich, uh, Riverside. And whenever my parents would come visit me, they'd always be like, this place used to be a car park. <laughs> I remember it was like a whole, where the whole Woolwich Riverside complex is now, yeah. used to look so different. But if you cross over the road into the market, there's heaps of shops. We used to live above one of the dry cleaners there. Yeah. So that's like a full circle moment. So after we lived in Woolwich, we lived in Charlton for some time. And we lived in this estate in Charlton. Bates House. Um, and Wumi, you also lived in that estate in Charlton. Same building. And we were both born in Nigeria. We both came here when we were around five years old. Crazy. And it was crazy because we both lived in this crazy. same crazy. like estate crazy. in Charlton, which is just crazy absolutely crazy um but then obviously after, after we lived there we then moved to kent yeah but i was still very young but i think we probably it probably was a, fa- a matter of like uche left and i moved in yeah prop yeah. yeah i don't think we lived there at the same time no no, no. it was yeah. like I, I think you definitely lived there first because i lived there because i lived in thamesmead first and then i lived in and what's charlton. funny is we lived no, in don't. charlton and yeah. then we lived in thamesmead briefly no because they bought like not a, the sw- I, didn't, yeah, I didn't know that because they did like a, I didn't know a buy to rent so we bought it lived there for a little bit yeah moved to ken and then they rented that property out that is crazy i didn't know that yeah but let's even talk about um yeah that's mad. Switch. but let's talk about how we managed to live together because yeah. i kind of feel like you imposed that ish on me because we went out one night low-key you kind of attacked and, Low and you kind of she literally i think she picked me up from my house and like dragged me to come and live in that place. Look, because you know what? I feel like you weren't warm to the idea at first. No, I wasn't. I think she I was, was probably kind of thinking. I was still thinking about it. Who's this girl? No, no, no. It wasn't really about you. It wasn't really about um who's this girl. It was more like, I was just scared because I was thinking currently where I was yeah. living, it was still chill. Yeah. Like I lived with, I was sharing accommodation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was still that comfort yeah, of like of course. bills and all these various things that when you came- Oh, with, I get you. So yeah, do you know what I mean? It's it was a big, big step, and huge actually, step. Yeah. And even the building, like compared to the, yeah, where yeah. I was living yeah, before yeah, yeah, and to yeah, where yeah. we moved to was yeah. a big, big jump. change, yeah, So yeah. I was a bit like, mm, I don't yeah. know yet. But you basically, you asked me, right? I'd uh, Because I really wanted to move out of my parents' house. Yeah. Um, I had this like, I was at the time I was, immensely fearful of living alone because I've struggled with low mood, I struggled with depression, I'd struggled with anxiety and I was just really worried about what living alone would like do to me mm. as an individual. So I was, you know, I'm always used to living with people. I lived with my parents, when I didn't live with my parents at university, I lived with friends, I always lived with people. Yeah. I never, ever, ever lived by myself. Um, so that was like a massive concern for me. And the whole idea was I wanted to live with someone that I really got along with. I thought they were super cool. Um, easy to get along with there was like a natural you know we get along easily but it wasn't a thing of like you're one of my best friends i really did not want to live with someone that i was very very close to for my own personal reasons that's not to say that other people can't but i just i just don't i'm just not of the belief that you should live with someone that you're very very close it is a bit i have seen examples where it's worked out really well but I have also seen examples where it's gone the complete other way. And so I feel like there's just so many of those examples. That there's exist. too many yeah. examples of like people not being friends. I, I read or saw something the other day about someone saying that they had to not be friends with their friend for a year mm. to recover from living together before they could actually rebuild a friendship. So yeah. I knew I didn't want to live with someone that was really close to so I didn't even bother asking any of my close yeah. friends. Yeah, we went out. I think we was we had a night out together is when we first were like at the time we were kind of we were always cool but it was at that point we were really building a closeness yeah Yeah, we were building a closeness and we were kind of in a different yeah but you know what it wasn't also we weren't it wasn't like an intentional oh i'm testing her out or anything but no no no, i remember that one night that we went out and we had like the best time yeah we went did we go we went clubbing right we went out for a mutual friend's birthday birthday, and then we went and then we went to the club 
and you dropped. Was I took mommy. Yeah, yeah, I took mommy home. <laughs> You took me I took home. home. We had and too you took me upstairs. And yeah. you know what? That is I've never today. seen your. I've never till seen today. inside your place. Yes, till today. I was that wasn't like, the first time I've ever been that this? drunk. <laughs> yeah, no trust. That, I don't know. I was like, what the till heck is day. going on here? <laughs> I don't know this girl. So in, my, in my old apartment, there was a, I lived with someone who had a dog. That so was also was news like, to me. I didn't know you had any roommates. I walked in there like, <laughs> wait, did he? Did he see you when you get when you? No, I think he was home. Oh, that is. But so because funny, I saw the, the dog, dog, I was like, yeah, who? <laughs> I ain't never seen a dog. Animal was so this? Sure. Like not a dead. And be, mind you, you're over So I was like, I think I'm I would screaming. know if she had an animal. That is so in funny. her residence. That is so funny. So yeah. The night that Uche took me home, um, I think, yeah, that was probably like the first time I was like, oh my God, I really like her. Yeah, that yeah. was like a nice vibe. Yeah, yeah. And then also finding out that we kind of went, we, were, we lived had in a lot similar of similar areas. Yeah. And we had like, a very deep chat in the car. Yes, as yeah. we kind of always like, oh, yeah, we'll do. Oh yeah, we'll get into different the, conversation, the but mix of deep question for you. What were your initial thoughts about me when we, and I'm going to say, ask you, I'm, I'm going to answer too, but what were your yeah. first initial thoughts that, that kind of sparked your mind? Like, you know what, this could be someone I could live with. Um, like I said, because we worked in similar industries mm -hmm. and funny enough, we ended up like naming our house, like the content house because we mm -hmm. worked in similar industries. I was like, okay, she'll kind of understand this the element of having to work from home and yeah. everything that comes with, because not everyone can deal with that, which yeah. is, you know, you're under no obligation to have to deal with that. If yeah. that's not, if you're a person that works a nine to five and you're not really home that much, if you don't feel like coming home to someone who's got their camera set up, I don't think you should have to. So it was really important to, for me to live with someone who was in a very similar industry or just had a really good understanding of it. So it kind of worked really well. And at the time, I remember asking you, oh, like, you know, in your Dartford house, do you want to, like, live there? Do you want to move out anytime <laughs> soon? Like, what's the vibe of your Dartford house? Like, what's going on there? And you were like, uh, I, I guess I could probably leave. And I was like, okay, cool. Do you want to live with me? And at first, I think you were a bit like... I don't know you like that. I don't know. <laughs> I was a girl. We're I don't not know. even talking on Instagram DMs, I think. We don't know. No, it was texting. Text? It was texting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, text. yeah. Um, I'm, by the way, it's not a thing where I, like, I knew you for a week and I was like, let's no, live together. No, 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 no. It's no. definitely been like years, yeah. but it was just a different dynamic of the friendship. Yeah. But that was almost a positive for me. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, okay, cool. We know each other well enough that we know none of us I know is she's not crazy. crazy. Yeah. And we have and we a lot of mutual this. friends from home. Mutual friends yeah. from home is also important because mutual friends in the industry can be a bit somehow hit and miss because it's like do the people know you like on the deep level mm -hmm. do they know the depth for you but i feel like friends from home it's a different kind of friendship because it was built in a different kind of atmosphere yeah so that was always like important to me so okay we have mutual friends outside of this industry yeah and people that could actually like vouch your character yeah if need be not that i went around asking about you because i didn't imagine but... hey so like what hey do you know tell about me, what do you know about women yeah. like da, da, da. i mean i did my thing i did go around oh did you ask people no yeah i was like I it's not really that know. yeah it's not that serious no. but i think for me um what kind of made me feel comfortable in mm. the end to kind of to say yes and just not see as anything other than that was just your vibe i feel like mm. every time we were together there was never really a time we were together where we had like surface level conversation and that was the we next never say, yeah all the time remember there was one day we went to um oh, where did we go it was mr dubai era we oh went yeah to, where did we go that place in um blue water the shopping center and we were sitting down we were eating uh, we went wingstop. To wingstop wingstop yeah, 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 yeah. it was in that conversation yeah. we had we just had, had this really beautiful in-depth yeah. conversation i was like no yeah yeah wow you think like me yeah and, not, <laughs> and that's the thing and th this is the advice i'd give to people you really have to not test but you really have to talk ass assess people's talk. depth yeah for i sure. think we had a lot of like deep conversations that weren't forced and mm -hmm. that weren't feeling like oh she's trying to probe it was just yeah. a very natural flow of the conversation that typically ended up getting quite deep yeah and I think that gave me the comfort to be like I, I, I can live, I with, can live with her yeah because also I think there was a lot of stuff that we just felt very similar about yeah there was definitely. a lot of life decisions yeah. and way of like navigating life that yeah, we were like yeah sure. we align on this and I think yeah. that's such an important thing because that's definitely the reason why we were we didn't really had we didn't have much conflicts like when we lived together because no, we didn't we no, just we no, just no. we were very similar in that way yeah. so that was like a really good thing I think one of the great things about our relationship or our, our living together mm. situation was that YouTube was like a very big part mm. of us. Like it was mm. a part, part of our home and everything. Cause when we mm. first moved in, like one of the, one of the first things I said to you before we even moved in was, was it before or after I was like to you, I was like, Ooch, are you okay with me? Filming, filming the show because yeah. that's yeah. when I first started the yes. show yeah yeah that yeah. was like a big thing I was like Uche are you okay with me filming and mm. automatically he was like yes absolutely mm. like this is content home mm. like and we kind of went off with that yeah, we were like yeah, yeah this is this is a this content, content house. house yeah content house and we yeah. had a whole freaking 
um, what's that account? We had a whole account called we, Content On our house. Netflix, yeah. On our Netflix account, we had a content house. It's crazy. Yeah. When like people we would come over, you want to watch. Yeah. We were like, yeah, this is the house that we're going to make our, our dreams a yeah, reality yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. And like work rate on 100. Yeah. It got to a point where my friends would be like, oh yeah, the content house. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what we yeah, call yeah, ourselves. Yeah. The sport. I feel like being someone who's been able to, I guess, create on YouTube, it's been interesting and I think mm. at the time that we were living together we were mm. both in different spaces mm. so in the phase that when I moved in I was like heavy on like I must do so much mm. oh god mm. I just was you remember I was like mm. crazy workaholic intense mm. stuff like intense whereas I feel like you were in a phase of like not necessarily even figuring it out you were in a bit of a funk at that phase I wouldn't necessarily say a funk but the thing with YouTube which I which I would think a lot of people would find after, I've been doing it for a really long time, over 11 years. And I think the most exciting part of YouTube is when you first start, Mm. because you've got all these ideas and you've got all these thoughts and you've got all these dreams. And yes, you don't really have anyone watching you, but actually that's kind of part of the excitement of it. Because if you, yeah, the freedom of being able to do what you want. And if it doesn't hit, then it's fine because there there isn't this huge audience scrutinizing it or, you know, chipping their opinion in or whatever, so you can really be free. It's also the time where you have the most time yeah. to really divest into this new realm and this new everything. So it's like, you're still in that season of watching a lot of YouTube yeah. and like taking in a lot of content and then seeing how that amalgamates into your own content or maybe you don't do it or maybe you do do it. So by the point I was living with you, I'd been doing it for a really, really long time. Mm. And I was definitely feeling a lot like I'd done everything that content wise. Mm. How did, do you, do you feel like being in, the, in our content house or how did being in our content house help you out of that space? Um, I don't know that it necessarily helped me out of the space per se, because the, the downside of that was it was also COVID. Mm. So a lot of inspiration sometimes comes from having something to get ready for or being outside or having an event or a lot lot of content on YouTube revolves around leaving your house. Yes, Mm -hmm. you do a lot of the filming indoors, but it's like, get ready for me with me for a night out, get ready for Valentine's Day, like club outfits. A lot of it is about leaving your house. So what it did do was challenge me to think about new ways to give content. Yeah. That wasn't just, you know. The same way that you were kind of used to. That I was used to, exactly. And I think that's what I love about YouTube, the fact that it gives you so much creative freedom. So much creative to, freedom, so much for variety. To find, for you to like find even yeah. your feet and like what makes sense for you. Because we, yeah. we create like different content on mm-hmm. YouTube. I think for me, when I first started and like finding my feet and this mm. whole thing was like, I think I definitely developed the most mm. in that period when we were at home. Because that's when mm. I was like really building my team and mm. like testing what kind of like um, episodes or like what kind of interviews that people mm. really wanted to see from me mm. and I feel like that's the only platform that was that made creating long form, long form content mm. like that that I wanted to create at that it was time perfect for possible you. it was yeah. it was like the most perfect time it was perfect for you. and I think where you came from like a radio background yeah and oh, you radio. yeah radio background you've pivoted into this new space was there a time for you that you felt like okay I feel like I, I really made it I can really do this you know what? It was definitely, I think my moment of that feeling of like, yeah, this is my platform and this is how I'm utilizing like the YouTube platform mm. was when I did my interview with Boga, IBD, mm. Notes. Like if you mm. remember that season, like mm. that was when I was like, oh my God, I I'm understand why I'm doing like yeah, very excited. Very yeah. excited. And I, I knew what I was doing. Mm. I felt like I, I finally figured out like what YouTube was about for me or mm. how I could make it work for me. Because I think mm. that's the beauty with a platform like that, that it, there's so much there's so many options there's so many varieties and mm. there's so many ways that you can like utilize it that mm. once you found like your it you double down and you just like go 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 and I think that was that was like really really it for me for you what about you what is like your with the variety of like formats that you can or content that you can create on the platform mm. what is your thing like what is your format that you felt like this is this is what feels like home I think long form for me will always be like home on YouTube of course, there's shorts now, but I think there's, with the plethora of different ways that people like people can consume short form content. Mm-hmm. What I will say about short form content on YouTube is that I think it's a very good gateway for people that have always wanted to do long form because it gives you the opportunity to build an audience in a way that you're already familiar with, yeah. and then you can then pivot and do more long form because ultimately everyone always wants to do YouTube. Like no matter where you have presence online, it always comes back to oh, but I really want to do YouTube. 
So short form content is something that people tend to have a better grip on just because of how you can do it mm -hmm. using just your mobile phone. Yeah. But for me, long form has always been a very essential and key way of connecting with my community. YouTube for me is all about community. Yeah. Like even the way I consume content on YouTube has changed. And now it's more, I watch a lot of podcast shows yeah, on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Um, Cause I love the visual element of it. Um, so it, in that essence in itself, it's like, I really like consuming long form visual. Yeah. So ultimately when it comes to YouTube, I will always do long form content. visual. Yeah, yeah, because you can see different short form content across other platforms, but to really sit down and take something in is, it's second to none and there's mm -hmm. just nothing else that gives you that kind of yeah it's the home for it yeah and it makes so much sense the interesting thing about when you live with a friend is like it's yeah. almost inevitable for you guys to rub off on each other in some way shape or form rub off on each other yeah. oh, in yeah, some yeah. way shape or form but also I, I pick up people's um lingo's mannerisms I was gonna I'm say like we thief. started to kind of speak but there was low-key some stuff like, what, wait what were some of our lingos did we have no we did there hello. was one particular hello one. no hello hello hello, also, um, hello. it is well and also, which one makes me laugh? Morning. Oh yeah, morning. 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 I actually good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, there's another one. Um, there's one we're missing. There's like a really obvious one we're missing. What? I can't even remember it. But we base. There's just no. I think when you live with someone, it's inevitable for you to kind of yeah. like pick up with yeah. certain traits or things yeah. about them. In what way do you feel like us living together influence your growth as a person? Oh, we. Now we're getting to the serious talks. <laughs> Come on, tell me. Zoe <laughs> so let's talk about it. Ooh. How did it My impact growth. our growth or our development in any way? I feel like definitely living with a friend, not yeah. to be confused with living with other people, living with a friend, someone that's like genuinely your friend, if it doesn't force you to really assess the way that you communicate or the way that you um, are with people, mm -hmm. then... What are you doing? Yeah. And that's not to say, oh, every day you're under each other's skin, blah, blah. But I just think even, even when you think about like with your siblings or with like your parents, it's not always a straight road. Yeah. It's not always, oh, everything is going well all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and also I feel like if you live with a friend and everything is going well all the time, yeah. one of you is not living authentically. Because if you are living authentically as yourself, there should be a moment, I'm not saying every day, but at least one or two occasions where you're a shift. in a yeah a, there's a shift mm -hmm. or you're in a situation or in a position where you are almost forced to put a mirror in front of yourself mm -hmm. just based on whatever's happening with the other person uh so yeah there was definitely like one or two moments where you really sit and you reflect and you think i mean maybe not for everyone because yeah. i'm a deep overthinker so that might also feed into it but i think there are moments where we you definitely like yeah, you up on see it. Growth. Yeah. yeah i think one of my biggest ones in terms of if I've been like very specific on like a particular area that you saw yourself, that mm. you saw like shifting or affected you. I think our one was our communication or like my communication. Yeah, you I was like, massive I, growth. I, yeah, I like when we lived together, especially in the early stages, I would be upset about things and mm. I just wouldn't say anything. Mm. And I kind of would just like, wouldn't, I would just speak in overall. Mm. I would just stop speaking overall. Like, and the thing is we're like the like, energy in the house. With her? Now the energy in the house would be very much like, oh my God, ah, da, 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 da. Yeah. It's a complete silence for me. I just wouldn't have any words to offer anybody or I just, and what's crazy I kind of wouldn't is, say I much. Really you I'm the worst it. person to have you would, that kind you of would pick up, Yeah, I pick up you on You would things pick up on it really quickly. Almost but then we still wouldn't we still wouldn't talk about it. I think there was, the, there was one particular moment. Um, we were in the car. I don't remember, but we were in the car. And you said to me, like, oh, like, I don't know what happened. But we just had a conversation. Mm -hmm. I think that's when I really first was like, you know what? As much as I'm not doing this to be, like, horrible mm -hmm. or to intentionally, like, make things in the house awkward. It's just mm -hmm. that I don't have the words to fully, like, express how I feel. Or I don't even... Or I'm not, I haven't fully, I think a lot of the time it's always like, I, I kind of just wasn't ready to like fully express mm. just because I was still evaluating mm. like where I stand on it, mm. how I feel about it. But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter because there's another person involved or there's another person that you're around that can feel like a shift in your energy mm. that you almost have to, not necessarily like think fast, but mm. be a, a, a little, but you be know, a little more even, considerate, be a little bit more considerate. It's the consideration, but also I think that situation can, this is why I say when you live with a friend, you really have to think about it because mm -hmm. that situation can spiral in different ways depending on the kind of friend you live with. I'm the kind of person that, even not just with you, even with like some of my other friends, some people just aren't non aren't confrontational. Yeah. I am 
confrontational. Yeah. If I have an issue, I'm the kind of person that wants to address it, it as soon as, just because I know that my energy will shift immediately. And I'm not one of those people. A lot of people are very good at keeping up a certain kind of rapport with you despite feeling away about yeah, no, see, I that's can't. not me see, I yeah can't. that's why I need to but speak then, about you know it. what though I also didn't know that I couldn't like I didn't know that my energy shifted so much I thought I was great at just still but thinking I think that's one thing I picked up about you quite I, early that, well, early, that early I, like, living my together energy that, would, like, shift. not that your energy was shift that just that you um I wear my heart on my sleep there's a lot of layers to you. Yeah. And if you were to take Wumi in on a night out or take Wumi in at a dinner, yeah. um, there's a danger, not just with you, just with people in general, there's a danger of taking that one experience that you've had with someone and okay, then... making that like their full... And then like making them. that everything yeah, about them. Yeah, no. And the danger with that is if there is situations, you then start thinking, oh, well, she's fake or she's this or she's not that kind of person. But actually... This is why it's important to really develop those friendships with people and that's living together does that in a very rapid yeah. way that you kind of i'm very i watch people a lot yeah so it didn't take me long to pick up on the fact that, okay she might be like this outside but indoors this is her indoors so when that, that situation did arise where it was like okay i'm sensing a change in energy mm. i'm not gonna address what situation it. do you what situation are you referring to the one where i left oh guys i don't know why you were annoyed with me what? um no i do know actually i won't get into it but there were, we'd had a conversation yeah. and I'm the kind of person that I just, I would just be talking five minutes later, I forgot half what I've said, but the other person really holds on to what I've said in that moment. So I think we were talking about a situation you were having with another friend mm. um, that was obviously like, I'm, it's a mutual friend, but it's obviously someone that you're far closer to than I am. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm still we, trying to think of the situation though. But. You know, that we were talking, it wasn't just including you. It was, it wasn't actually anything to do with you. It was a situation that was happening with your friends. Yeah. But I happened to be cool with one of those friends. Okay. So you'd relayed the incident. You didn't even relay the incident to me. I don't know how it came to be that I knew and you knew. So you were exp talking about, oh, you know, like, I can't believe that she would do that, blah, blah, blah. And I think I was like, oh, but you know, there's always two sides to every story. Mind you, it was very black and white. I wasn't agreeing with what she was saying, but I'm that kind of person that I'm always like, oh, you know, maybe she had her reasons behind why she did that. I'm like, my mind is completely blank on the situation. It was what essentially split your group. Oh, and then you and were just about like, like, what, girl, what other kind of point of view is there? What? There is, it's literally But you black. didn't express, yeah, you didn't express that. I was that. like, it's yeah. just black. I was there like, you is know, no other perspective. I was either. like, when you talk to her, I'm sure she'll have like her yeah. own view on why she did things oh, the way the she did. Oh, dinner. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Yeah, remember, why okay. she did things the way yeah, she no, did. I feel you, I feel you. I think, yeah, I think that was like definitely my biggest thing like my biggest thing was yeah. understanding how to like better communicate now yeah. i kind of feel like i'm like an over communicator where i'm just like because the thing is communication isn't a, a hard thing for me to do i'm just very cautious to not yeah. hurt anyone's feelings because yeah. then i also have another part of me that's like goes a little bit too intensely mm. with how i communicate mm. and i think interestingly enough i feel like that's something that you picked up about yourself oh yeah i'm, the, I'm like that you that you're one downside i'm a very matter-of-fact person and i'm trying to tailor communication obviously the tailor communication for each person yeah but yeah, no, this is right. more when it comes to like close friends because i think when i was younger i'm like pushing 30 now i'm aggressively close to 30 not aggressively close to 30, not a bad like, thing but me. it's just how i deal with interpersonal relationships is very different from when i was like 24 or 23 and when i was young i would just say things even when i lived with you in the beginning yeah i would just say things and you know sometimes it might like rub you up the wrong way but i'd just be like Oh, so like I'm just being honest, and you're like, okay, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, and then it would just be like, okay, okay. I think one that really stands out to me in terms of how we communicate differently or how we receive communication differently. This was so not that it was so bad, but it was weighing on me so heavy. I had to take it to my therapist. So there'd be like times where not me leading you to your therapist, <laughs> bruh. Um, in some cases, it was receptive. Like, okay, one time you took a picture from outside your balcony and I thought, like, the building outside was very notable. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, can you just not do that anymore? You were like, okay, I've done it before, but I guess I'll stop doing it. I was like, okay, cool. And then there was minor, and this is the thing about how minor things can build into bigger things. Minor things that maybe, like, leaving the light on or not locking the front door that I'd, like, say it and say it. And then after a while, I'd be like, I just feel that maybe this is just... It's just not something she's used to doing. Mm -hmm. Rather than me just keeping saying it, I'll just yeah. turn the lights off if I can. And I think, to be honest, I remember that being 
at the time, I didn't remember it being like a big deal. Not in a big my deal. Mind. No, 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 yeah, no. In, yeah. For me, like yeah. I just, I think because I was very, and that was still, again, when we were talking about like moving in together, mm. I was still living very freely. Mm. I think there was a lot of things. I was still like growing into becoming like a responsible adult who mm. cared about mm. the lights, who cared about the doors being open, mm. who cared about things that you should mind care you, about. Given them context, I just, if you didn't lock the door, the door was like open. it was open. Like, I just and it wasn't the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, I was just very. Free. She was like, Let's I was affair, like, it's whatever. fine, like, you know, da, 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 da. Like, and it just, it took me a little, it took me a little longer yeah. to kind of get into just respect, like not even just respecting, but being more protective of like my own, yeah. not even just for yourself, but yeah. even with my own environment, yeah. like where I'm living, yeah. etc. So I think, yeah, I think we handled that well because it, yeah. it wasn't as if it like manifested. Just, that's into, why I took it, it didn't, therapy. Yeah, it didn't really, I'm sorry. Because it was like, it's still hilarious by the way. Saying it to me, I was like, I don't know if I should keep bringing it up to her because I don't want to feel like the naggy mum or like this naggy, because obviously there's a, a minor age gap between us. So I was like, oh, I don't want to feel like this older person. My sister. Always, like, yeah, like an older yeah. sister's always nagging her like, oh, do this, do this. Close your door. Close the door. I was, like, I was like, you know what? Spoke about my therapist, kind of got over it. And it was nice because it's like, you don't feel like someone's being resentful towards you or like holding things against you. Yes, they've communicated it. Okay, how has the person received it? It's changed, changed behavior for a short time. Okay, yeah. cool. What can I do to not get myself in frustrated a tears? In yeah, this, frustrated yeah. about something. All right, cool. You know the person's not doing it maliciously. You know you've told her. You know that she can be quite absent-minded. It is what it is. Move on. You've not d- absent-minded, excuse just me. Just a little bit. Excuse just me. Just a little bit. But you just did it yourself. To be honest, I think at that phase especially, I just was very... Yeah, just like... Free. And also, I very, think... Very in my own world. I didn't really care about a lot of stuff that was going on as long as like... No, I but you did. And that my, was the thing. the thing that allowed me to give you more graces. Yes, you might be a bit like careless in these cases, but I also think you were also processing a lot and like going through a lot and trying to figure out a lot so it's like a light switch just isn't in the forefront of my of mind at that my time, mind yeah. right now like closing the door oh yeah i forgot to close the door but it's not like i intention was like i'm not closing the door today mm. uh, that will tell her it was like <laughs> i'm just dashing out the door i'm just dealing with this i'm just going through that that allows the other person to give you more grace, grace. So they understand mm-hmm. more about what you're going through and like everything like that what about you what do you feel like because i think okay we've established that my thing was definitely like the communication that mm. improved on my end which till this day significant because i'll be there on uche's line like hello ma'am see what happened <sighs> let me last tell you week? about some growth i'm already feeling that thing <laughs> so let me so talk to me what <laughs> me was been, what growth. was um what was your thing that you've kind of realized especially now that it's been what maybe like a year it's been about a year or so a year plus it's been since babe, it's been it's a minute been like it's been a minute since we've like left years. so what, what have you what do you see in yourself now that you see or you can attach to that period in our life as that has growth. changed yeah me. That has growth. Changed, that you've grown definitely understanding from. friendships you know i'm not gonna lie understanding i learned a lot from you about um you know showing up for people not just you but just you were one of the people that's very instrumental in like showing up for people not your people i yeah. remember us having, <laughs> my people my people my, my people do you remember that day you were like my people my people my people me every day my people my people my people my people Bruh, it's important. <laughs> no, it's but I remember one day we had a conversation because there was like a, a time where I would like be, and this is the good and the bad thing about living with someone that isn't necessarily like your bestie or like your really close friend. Yeah. Sometimes it can be quite difficult to pin down a time to spend time together outside of, you know, the natural like, oh, maybe you see each other in the mornings, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I think I was in a season where I was trying to really like pour into Wums a little bit. I could see that she was going for da da da. And I was like really trying to pour into her. But because you were so it was really hard to like stick you. And I remember having a conversation with you, like we've gotten so close and we've built such a beautiful friendship and such a beautiful like connection living together. I would really be so sad if we weren't to live together any- again. And when we didn't and, have a friendship. And it just, it, it just wasn't this, it wasn't the same kind of level of intimacy that we have living together. And I remember that having that conversation because I was like, oh, you know, like, and it's very easy when you're friends with someone, um, particularly when you live with them, because you really see how they pour into other people, how other people pour into them, or whatever, whatever. And I think in that moment, I was like, I just feel like maybe, and this isn't a bad thing to prioritise our friendships, because it's not a bad thing, because you are naturally very like close to some people. Mm. I was like, you know, I just feel like maybe you're not pouring into me. as much. And I remember it was off the back of us having a conversation about, um, I think there was... Uh, I can't even remember. It was off the back of us having a conversation where you felt like I wasn't pouring into you. So I was like, mm. okay, let me really make the effort 
to pour in and like really hone in yeah. on this friendship. And I was just like, yeah, I just don't really feel like I'm getting that from you. So it was in that time that I felt, I don't know, I just felt like, okay, I don't want to leave this place and us not have the same level of friendship mm. anymore. So that was like a pivotal moment for me, but it really- Why was it a pivotal? Was it Because it helped me we... understand you mm-hmm. and it helped me understand like us as friends and as, as individual. Honestly, living together, the whole living experience really helped me understand you more. Mm. Um, but I learned so much from you about like being a friend, showing up to, for people, really pouring into people, um, being really head yes. in and all in in what you do in terms of like the show and everything that goes into that. And like the little mind of Wumi, I think a lot of people, not even say littles and like belittling, but like the mind of Wumi Bello. Cause a lot of people, <laughs> even people that, you know, might see you a lot or might feel like they're like, oh, you know, like I know Wumi, blah, blah, blah. but I'm like, no, if you really opened her up, the mind of Wumi is like so incredible. So it was just like a like a, a blessing to really sit and like be in such close proximity to you and really be like, whoa, this is like, this woman is incredible. I can't lie, the other day, so it was my birthday the other day, I keep oh, talking about it, I can't let it go, She I'm was sorry. whipping. No, I can't lie, <laughs> Uche sent me the most amazing voice yeah. note, birthday voice note, and I literally, I was like, oh my God, yeah. I'm like crying right now. I think we're both very, we're both like, lovers we really do yeah be in friendships really do be in romantic in you really people. love on your people yeah, yeah so no, I, think, I think that's something that connected us actually yeah very much so because there wouldn't be a day where there wouldn't be conversations upon conversations but i think um talking about i want to get into more so the good moments but i also mm. want to talk about the moments where things weren't so pretty mm. right the the awkward times the awkward phases money can be a bit tricky mm. you know when you live with someone and i think for anyone who wants to live with someone, it's important for us to kind of like dissect that a little bit. Mm. Even though when I think about it, I don't really feel like we ever had any sort of like money issues. We never did. We, interestingly enough, because I think that's usually like one of the biggest things that like no. cause but a relationship. I think we ship. worked We it just were like because split one everything. person took. Um, I think one person took council tax. And one you person did, took, you did bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you also did all the setup yeah, stuff. Yeah. Oh my god! Because yeah. you weren't here. Baby. In the world, she was not in I the world. Said... When we first moved in, this babe, <laughs> mind you, mind you, you you're like, like, I'm not, not even. <laughs> the thing is, it's so funny because, like, I'm like, I'm just not here. I'm be with the people in the island somewhere. I don't know. <sighs> but at that time, because Uche was also not in the world, one of us had to be in the world Bruh. to sort out the things of the house. So I ended up kind of like sorting out, like, our ca- no, was it you did? I think um, you did the council tax. Right? I did the I council, the council tax, tax, but did I did the like bills. bills. All yeah. the bills. You did all the bills. And at that time, because I think I was really excited, I didn't really care. Because there was a day you came to my room, you were like, oh, like, you've been doing like all the stuff, so I hope yeah. you're okay with that. I was like, oh, well, I don't She really said, know. I love doing the admin stuff. I was stuff. like, I don't mind. I said, that was a lie, because I don't enjoy it. Maybe at that point in my life, I kind of yeah, did. Yeah, you were but... just like, yeah. Do you know, also, I, I think was just because I then. found the, f- you were away, so yeah. I found the flat. Oh, yes. And then yes, I showed yes, you, and yes, you were like, yes, yes, yes love it, love it. And then I think because I found the flat, maybe you then felt like, okay, I'll do the bills. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, I'll do council tax. Yeah. That was a breeze. That element of it was a breeze. Even yeah. at the end, I was like, okay, this is how much I paid. How much did you pay? Wums was on some, I don't owe you any money. I said, well, this is how much Wait, I paid. Oh, the, when, you... when we got to the end, we were like consolidating how much. I <laughs> was <laughs> furious. Oh babe, my God. I, said, I don't know if you felt it from my text. I said, Jesus. Because. Why is that happening? I was like, we I think thought, you owe me money. And you were like, I was no, like, no, I babe. I how how can I? Like, no, how can I owe you money? I said, it's you been, don't know how much council tax is. <laughs> All right, cool. How much did you no, pay for because, No, because you know what was funny? We already left the house. I was thinking, what do you want Long from time. me? Long time. It was Long like time. five months out. And this baby is texting me saying, hey, hon, I think you owe me some council tax. <laughs> I was thinking, what council tax do I owe you? <laughs> Leave me alone. And then you mm. sent them out and I said, Jesus. She was literally like, whoa, this is how much I you was... paid. I was like, yeah, cough up. <laughs> Give me my money. Run me my peas immediately. I was like, rah. You, you were sure? like, wait, let me just I calculate. Like, babe, <laughs> <laughs> she said, let me just calculate what I spent. No, because I actually sat down. I said one. Yeah. Two. But I think this is the good I thing. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, we're quite, that was one element where we were quite like laid back. 
It was only at the yeah. end that we were like, okay, let's figure let's out. Let's figure this yeah. out properly. And yeah. even then it was like, okay, cool. This is how much, okay, cool. But it wasn't a problem. It no, was very it was like, much like, I you paid need this, this you take paid this. that, yeah. cool. This is the total, 50, divide 50. it, give yeah. me the difference. That's what we that did. And I, think, and I think that was a really healthy way of going into things. It didn't cause any sort of like no, issues. No. When it came to even buying furniture for the house, everything was like 50-50. Do you like this? Yeah. I love the sofa. Well, yeah. to be honest, I would never get that kind of sofa again. In my life. Ever. But it worked But it did what it needed to do at that time. The chairs that we got for our dining table, our dining table. When we were leaving the flat, I was like, look, I want this. I was like, I want this. And that was it. And that was it. Honestly, I don't know where I actually kind of go. Because we, no, we had no qualms no. with like sourcing anything. Even easy. the TV. I don't know how you, you we, I finessed you to like get that in my place. But okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you can take the TV. I, like, I don't mind. I was like, I'll take the toast like, the kettle. You said it. That's between you <laughs> yeah, and Yeah, I said, God. you can have the TV. I'm running with my TV. Yeah. See you later. So yeah. I think, yeah, that was like one thing that we never really had any no. sort of trouble And with. actually, we always say this, considering I'm a, I know some people are going to roll their eyes. I'm a Virgo, she's a Scorpio, you right? Trade. I'm not a Scorpio. Did you not watch the episode with the witch? Ex-witch? Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Sarah. Ex-witch? Oh, what? you are a Scorpio. No, babe. Wait, don't tell me. Babe. Don't tell me. No, tell I'm me. not a star sign. Excuse me, we're not inviting demons into our life anymore. Please, oh. we won't go of this life. You're not a okay, for the, You're for the purpose of what I'm about to say. I'm so sorry. I cannot even hear she's it. She's a no. Scorpio and I'm Whoa, a Virgo. I am not. I'm actually a Virgo double Scorpio. That's between you and Virgo so, double Scorpio. Considering all of this, it was very, like, there wasn't actually that much conflict living to them. We had maybe no, like we had. two we didn't have any. shifting oh, conversations. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get into one of them. Oh, which one? One of the bigger ones, but not yet. Well, maybe in a little bit. But oh, we don't. Let's, let's talk we about, let's talk about. Star <laughs> Science anymore? I do. I... You don't. Trust I me. do. I'm gonna send 100%. you. I'm gonna cut out. I haven't actually watched clip. her. You need to watch it. Maria texted me. Maria is Uche's bestie manager. <laughs> yeah. Maria texted me. Maria was like, "What an episode!" I am letting go. I need to show you. Where's my phone? My phone is here, bro. You think I'm joking? I'm being so the last. What? I'm gonna message her. You're gonna let here, this like, one go. Bruh. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna message you tomorrow. And be like, "Are you what?" She even said. I'm in Yo, I'm 10 minutes into this interview and my boots, and I shake my boots. <laughs> then she comes and she's like, I can't believe how irreal it actually is. No. Let's talk about the way you've left her on Okay, red. please don't do that. <laughs> no, please, why would you do that to my sister, Maria? Why would you Your sister, I, you left her on red. She knows I meant no harm. And okay. love, guys, I'm just really bad with texting. Okay. I just like a voice note on a call. But anyway... So yeah, double Scorpio, all of that stuff, God forbid. Yeah. But one of the one of the biggest things that I really enjoyed is that we both had very different habits. And yeah. one of the core ones that we you found hilarious like, yeah. is um, my morning rituals. Which, no, 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 no. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Why does, the, light, why does the, the light, why does all it? the lights need to be on so, <laughs> when it's bright outside? <laughs> Obviously, when what you, kind when, of ritual is this? <laughs> when you live with someone, everybody has their own habits and their own way of doing things. I think, Child. I'm just, I'm a morning babe. I love the morning. I love the morning. You love the morning, morning too. Morning girls, and I'm yeah. like, uh, in the morning, I need to just shake up the house a little bit. Do you know what's so interesting? I don't even do that as much anymore. I've kind of, like, Stabilize a little bit more, but back because when we realize why we would lived, you turn on the light? No, on? but I miss it though. I actually miss it because it really helps me. Anyway, so the gist is that I would be up at like freaking six a.m. in the morning, sometimes five oh, in the morning. No, I know where this the is music. Going. <laughs> I know it's going. I already know it's going. <laughs> no, but how did you? How did I you... had an adult sleepover <laughs> with my ex-boyfriend. Obviously, I'm used to living with her. I, I stay gonna, living I with you. Let's so let me land. I don't, I don't sleep over with my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I'm used to her rubbish, so I'm like, yeah, day in the life. She starts with her morning routine, music on full blast. Maybe I just learnt to sleep through it. Morning, music on full blast. <laughs> this man is going to turn around and say, does she do that every morning? <laughs> you have to go tell her to turn that off. <laughs> I literally said, like, can you and turn it down, like, please? This girl has never asked me to do this. What a foreign text. What do you mean? I was like, fair enough. Maybe he's here. Maybe that man is around. So that was <laughs> fair enough. But I think I think it was it was beautiful, kind of like being able to have the freedom to mm. like just just live and like mm. operate accordingly. Mind you, we're both gym people. We only oh, did yeah. a gym session once, and it was in the evening. What together? Yeah. Why didn't we? We went to David Lloyd's. We went to the same gym. No, you moved to David Lloyd's. Yeah, that's why. And I stayed Which at um, the gym. Betsy Oh I like Betsy okay, okay, Yeah okay, okay. Even the equipment It just made more sense Yeah But you I'd decided like, You were like I don't want to be there I want to go to David Lloyd And now I look at me I go to that David Lloyd I said <laughs> And now look at me I miss my home Why where are you now? I'm in the gym Right by my house now Downstairs Because David Lloyd is like 
Oh, that's David Lloyd's in... one unnecessary. No, that's David Lloyd's in Dolphins. I thought you missed David Lloyd's in Dolphins. I do, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Oh, the cost. Number one, the cost, and also the my gym is literally down the road. I don't have oh. to drive it, and I like the idea of like. And there's the a good gym, the gym there as well. Yeah, it's, I don't. Yeah. I think my gym is the gym, but yeah, it's really. That's nice. a good like a gym drive. actually. It's a vibe. It's interesting though. We should have definitely done more gym stuff together. That's what I'm saying. We the irony. We were both like wake up in the morning and like go to the gym. Gym in the morning. Yeah. Maybe that was also a blessing in this. Well, not in disguise, but a big blessing because imagine if I lived with someone that wasn't a morning person or you lived with someone who mm. was a morning person because we'll both kind of leave the house simultaneously yeah, like, yeah. I'll leave you'll yeah, leave yeah, yeah. and then we'll kind of come back at the same time yeah. and then come into the our gisting. therapy home and then the gisting <laughs> we would like our routine would be we'll come home literally yeah. into she'd be putting salt in her oats who don't, puts salt in the oats? Don't kill me. Jesus, take the don't, world. But I was even going to go in the direction of talking about like the fact that, yes, our home was content house, 100%, mm. because we were about our work and we mm. were about our creating of content and everything else. But it was also, a big part of it was very much like spiritual, ther- spiritual mm. therapy. Like we we did a lot of very like healing. debunking mm. and unmasking. And mm. like just, there was a lot of revelation that came mm. from, you know, us living together. When we talk about the essence of, of therapy house, what were some of your best or memorable moments or experiences that we share oh, together we. as roommates there's there wasn't a best there was a best because I, th- I don't okay we'll get uh, yeah you always say it's the same one i know which one you're gonna say well, do you one of two do you? but i think people don't realize that it was like a every day or every other day occurrence yeah. of really like heart on the table like, or not, soul not even on your body, table everything everything on just the table just on the table speaking like... from your soul just very and it wasn't like a, oh let's come into the kitchen and have a chat it was just like a Oh, like, morning, morning, like, oh, how are you? Oh. <laughs> or you just be talking about something that's so light, light-hearted and then the conversation just moves there. Yeah. Because we're both very deep people and we're both very, like, um, I don't know, nothing has really ever surfaced for either of us. Yeah. So it's very easy to get into this conversation. And it's, like, a 10-minute conversation. We'll now it's to... midday and it's, like, damn, been I need, here for to, two hours yeah, I need why, to go do I what here? I need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one of, probably one of my favourite or memorable or maybe a point, maybe the best question is, like, what mm. strengthened our relationship? Mm. I think it was when we... I, oh, yes, actually. Ooh. It was when, when... The calendar. Yes, but, like, how that even came about. Because yeah. we can't talk about the calendar without talking about... What how, even, yeah, how yeah. what led to the calendar yeah. so there was a period in our when we lived together and this happens when you live with someone yeah you, you will 100 percent have your conflicts or like your furious your, your period where things aren't you guys aren't aligned or yeah. you aren't seen eye to eye yeah, and we had that good, yeah. yeah we um, it's it's so healthy yeah. i think for me we our relationship grew immensely mm. from that experience and mm. honestly as much as it was like difficult to navigate mm. and understand and figure mm. out like where we both stand on it we grew so, mm. so much. Our, our friendship grew yeah, so, so 100. much. Just to give you guys some context, I think it's important, but basically there was, um, naturally, we're both women, like we're going to get into relationships. Mm. You were in a relationship with someone mm. or getting, I think it might be best for you to kind of... Oh no, we weren't in a relationship. We just, uh, we're dating. Yeah. Yeah. But it kind of conflicted with a friendship in my life, a close mm. friendship in my life mm. that at the time I didn't, like, I didn't know where, I didn't even know about it. And like it was, cra- do you know what? After, I didn't know about the, your relationship. After we sat and spoke about the link between the guy I was dating and one of her really good friends, um, we used to talk about relationships and guys all the time. Yeah. But I intentionally never spoke about that guy. And you intentionally never... If I spoke about a situation and didn't mention the guy's name, you intentionally didn't probe further. Mm-hmm. And I think that in itself said something because if you were talking about a guy, I'd be like, who is it? Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Or if I was, you'd be like, oh, who is it? Mm-hmm. But... The fact that neither of us really... It was like there was this underlying feeling of, I kind of know. Yeah. And there was an underlying feeling of, like, I don't want to put you in a situation because I'm dating someone that has dated someone that you're very good friends with. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to put you in a situation where it's like your best friend thinks that you're encouraging a relationship between your other close friend and her ex. Yeah. So it's better if you just don't know anything at all. Yeah. Which at the time, I didn't really understand because even if you remember the first time Mm. you kind of told me I was like well I don't really know if I would if I agree with Mm. like you not for completely telling me but to be honest I feel like if you had told me then it would have put me in an even worse position that's what I'm saying yeah yeah that I would literally have to especially for someone that you're just dating because it's like okay I'm dating this person like is it is it going to turn into anything serious and at the time this was like a friend of yours it's not like a friend like other friends of yours that I've hung out with and like we've all spent time together this is literally just purely your friend Mm -hmm. and closest 
one of your close friends yeah. never met this person. It's not like I spent time with her and she was talking about her ex and then I was like, oh, da, da, da. It was so separate, but so close. Yeah, it was difficult. It was mad. It, yeah. was a, it was a really intense period and it happened quite early on, which says a lot, to be honest, because clearly, clearly God needed some shift to happen. Not that early on, babe. It, it was... It was no, it was it like... It was not that. It was early. No. We moved in, in... Remember, we moved in in January or December. Decem- December, January. It happened in like March. Yeah. That's early. Was it March? It was like March. It wasn't that hot. I remember oh, I was doing okay. space shoots in a house. Okay, so it was like okay. March period. But in essence, I think one of my biggest thing in that in that period that I had like such a massive problem with you because it was, it was like two things. It was like, mm. yes, you know, obviously this situation is what it is. But this man is around. Oh uh, yeah, because this, do you know this, what happened? This man is here Guys, in it was our so, presence. It was so crazy, and he lied on my name. Wooey one day came to my room and she was like, "So, um, Mr. Man," and you know when it's like the room is silent, everyone's looking at each other like, "Yeah, that was that a kind of vibe." Yeah. So it's like, oh, how do you know? And I was like, I know. I know, and yeah. it's like, okay, so. You know that I've been dating this person. I know that this person is one of your closest friends, ex-boyfriends. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, this is serious. Fine. Yeah. Okay. But the kicker was, guys, why don't you, this is someone I was just dating. So yeah. I have a very, everyone has very different views on like relationships and dating. But for me, when I'm in the dating phase of something, I don't really care too much about what you're doing outside of when you see me. What you do when you're not with me, that's your business. Just like if I'm dating someone, I don't really want you to be all up in my mix about what I'm doing when I'm not with you because you're not my man. Mm -hmm. You're just someone that I enjoy spending time with and that time that we spend together, love it. Yeah. If it develops further than that, then you can start asking me all these questions. If it doesn't, no. But one thing I do really value is honesty. So if I ask you about something, I expect you to be honest about it. Not that I'm going to ask you about intimate details of your personal life because that's not really my kind of speed. But if I say to you, you know, this person is your ex, I'm very aware that although this person is your ex, you guys still have like a dynamic or relationship call call. If it develops any further than what you've already told me, out of respect, I would like to know that. I'm not telling you, I'm not saying you have to have a full rundown of it. Unbeknown to me, his ex was also saying the same thing to him about like, you know, we have like a cool dynamic. We still spend time with each other. No, we're not. Yes, we're not in a relationship, but we kind of have our understanding. If this changes, you can be honest with me about that. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to hold it against you. Mm-hmm. I'm also saying, you know, if anything changes with your ex, you can be honest about me, about it to me. Yeah. I'm not going to you yeah. know, say anything about it. Yeah. Cool. The guy, to me as a guy, I feel like that's perfect. But I also think a lot of guys overthink situations which then leads to them being dishonest when you don't need to be. Mm-hmm. If someone says X to you, just take it as X. Don't, and I'm not saying he necessarily did this, but people tend to like bring in other situations and then project that onto what they're dealing with, mm-hmm. which essentially leads to you being dishonest about something that you don't necessarily need to be dishonest about with that person. And I say all that to say, how Wumi even came to the point where she was talking to me about this is because your friend has said to you, do you know that my ex is dating Uche? I don't know how she came to that knowledge. That's her, you know, her cross to bear, for yeah. lack of a better word. But it's like one person's dishonesty essentially all came crumbling down on you. And I think you, On me. Yeah, and I feel like, like you a house. really bared the weight of that because it's like, Girl. I'm not involved in the slightest. Girl. But for you, it was like, because you as an individual are being dishonest to two people that are very dear to me, it's now falling on my head yeah. and I almost have to like, this person thinks I've known, your close friend thinks, thinks that I've you've known, known the whole time. And I've been this, I like, didn't tell you yeah, to intentionally yeah, yeah. protect you from being in a situation yeah. where you have to be dishonest to someone that you're really close to. Yeah. Just because it's like, okay, but this isn't really like my business to share, mm. but also like you're my dog. So if you yeah. ask me about it, like that puts me in a tight situation. Yeah. So I think you rightfully felt you know disrespected disrespected you had your opinions about the situation he had his opinions and for him a lot of it was you know well i've had my discussion with my ex we've kind of hashed out i've had my discussion with you Mm -hmm. we've hashed it out to me i don't feel like i need to go hash it out with someone that isn't even directly involved in the situation Mm -hmm. you obviously had your own viewings about like okay but this is how i feel in this situation Mm -hmm. i think i think my biggest thing with all of it was 
life happens, right? Yeah. Like, it's inevitable for things, situations yeah. to be complicated, complex in ways that I won't be able to understand, you might won't understand, yeah. and he might not even understand. Mm. But when it came to you guys deciding to, and we've spoken about this many times, when it came to you guys deciding to continue like your relationship mm. and it bec- and you were in like a happy space and whatever mm. else i felt like it was just wrong on his end mm. oh no 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 no. my thing was with you it was wrong for you not to see that he needed to apologize to me before he like mm. became because he just pulled up it was like an automatic even, it was like an i, was, automatic I actually switch. wasn't even in the room i remember point. i remember no. we were we went from we went from things just being Unclear, uncertain. Mind you, I had to, I actually didn't speak to him for like maybe a month or two. No, I know. Remember, yeah, I was yeah, very much like, like a, in a minute. It was, it was, but it was like wild. it was like how I obviously you would mention like a couple of things, but it was like the one day, and I always talk about this mm. day with you. But it was the one day when I just came. It was I was in the kitchen. I was thinking, this man is mm. here in this kitchen, and here I am feeling uncomfortable. I in wasn't my even kitchen. Mind no, you, I wasn't even in, in the kitchen. kitchen. I wasn't Why even are there. You was in your room. Yeah, I was and I was room. like, you're, you're I didn't in even my know all of this was like, happening. Where's my apology? <laughs> I was made to look like an absolute and you, okay. lizard in to this give situation, some co- to give and I've not got an apology. To give some context to the people, I'm going to talk to you guys now, to give some context yeah. to you guys that are watching, so they had a dynamic before I met him. So obviously she'd spent time with, this is her, one of her, like one of her best friends, ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So she had spent time with him when a lot. he was, a lot of time with him yeah. when he was with his ex. So it's yeah. not even like, oh, you're my best friend's ex-boyfriend, but I've never met you. Like they had their own dynamic. And I think that was why it was even worse yeah. to a degree. Cause it's like, I already- You know me. Yeah. Like you know me. You know this me. isn't like a, a really, yeah. this is, and also just even outside of like, you knowing me, you know how you painted me to be. And you, you I feel like for me, just on it, like a human level, obviously- I actually been, don't think he spoke, well to me anyway. It wasn't about, no, cause you can, you can do harm without you actually verbalizing True. anything. Like you True. saying something doesn't actually mean, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the actions and the things, the way things played out, mm. you know how it painted me and what mm. it looks like. And I think it was your job just on a human level to just be like, hey, Especially because I'm gonna be in your kitchen. Like, let me, mm. let me, let me, let me speak about this. Mm. And I think that was like my biggest thing. So I was like, I'm your girl. Like, how do you not see this? But as... I had, and that's but the I, thing. Obviously, I didn't know that you had yeah, conversations I, I'd with, already you had, conversations had with I had like a, I was proper, and I think that's something you because I'm when it comes to female friendships, I'm fiercely like, no, you're not gonna disrespect anyone I'm close to. You're not gonna. Yeah. But I'm also not someone that's like, like just like with you, I can appreciate your point of view from things and I can appreciate if I said to you with me I feel like you should apologize to Maria because xyz and on a level you're like okay but here is my point of view and here yeah. is what I think and here is why that's just something that goes against what I would do I'm very receptive to that kind of conversation if someone was like I'm not apologizing to her mm. that's a very different conversation mm-hmm. but if I've laid everything out on the table to you and I've said well this da, 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 and then you've come with your own like okay well I've spoken to my ex because a part of the discussion was conversations that you and your best friend you and your friend had yeah. and how those conversations then you know she may have had similar conversations to him mm-hmm. and maybe like a loss in translation or maybe this is how she said or this is how you said it, blah, blah, blah. and it's like a lot of that because there was history with you guys had a dynamic before I was even in the picture mm-hmm. it's very hard for me if it was a, an ex that you know you met through me it's a very different conversation but it's hard for me to chime in on situations that I wasn't present for yeah. and for dynamics that I'm not aware of. So if someone's like, well, this is ABC, there's only so much I can say from like a, okay, but in this situation, this is how I feel. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah. I think um, in the time when it was happening, it was really hard for me to kind of see it yeah. from that perspective yeah. very much so. Cause I was like, we, we live together and mm. I know that, yes, you didn't do it intentionally. Mm. It wasn't like, yeah. Cause when you, when you love someone, like mm. you, you love them and you're, and you're a lover girl. Mm. In the same way that I'm a lover girl, but I'm so not I, blind. I'm not blind. No, 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 lover girl. no. But you're still not but to in be the confused. Sense, but in the sense that, like, in the sense that, like, at the end of the day, it wasn't like you went out of your way to be like, yeah, f this or f mm. that. Like, you just was operating right. Mm. And I think for me, it it just it took me through our conversations because mm. for a while I didn't say I didn't. Did I say anything to you at that moment? I felt like there was like a period no, where we did. like- No, you did, you definitely was, did. But the deeper, I guess the more, the conversation that kind of moved things over the line and got us to like a better place. Cause for a while, things were a bit awkward. Things were very but awkward But you know what, it was like, like- We weren't speaking. It was awkward I across speaking. a lot and it wasn't it was, just Yes, it was you. awkward in a lot of And I think that's another yeah, yeah, reason yeah, yeah. why it was, it was, it was just a, not a, yes. a great time for me anyway, because yes. 
friends will always have that and that's why I'm, I'm never that friend like I will give you my opinion about mm. whoever you're dating and whatever whatever and dating is a very important word like if I'm just spending time with someone I'm just getting to know them I don't have like I don't know you like I would know someone who's actually my man. Mm-hmm. So I never, ever want to be in a point in life. And I'm sure we've both had these experiences where, you know... The world doesn't understand it, but you understand. Yeah, and it's also like, you know, you're not my man. I'm just getting to know you. Something might happen that throws that out of the loop. But I also still feel like if I don't serve that, mm-hmm. I'm always going to think, oh, but what if I... And I don't ever want to be like five years from now. I'm thinking, oh, what if I didn't, yeah. you know, give that an opportunity? And we both had, you know, situations <laughs> and we've been like, okay, let's, let let's me, see. it's unfinished business. Let yeah. me see what's really, and it's like through that, then you learn. Yeah. Or through that, then you see whether that person was really meant for you or they yeah. weren't meant for you or like, but I, I think if no one cheats and if no one does anything that's like crazy, me, I'm open to giving people grace, especially if it feels like unfinished business. Yeah. I think hearing there was a day that we were in the car when all this stuff was going on and things were like awkward in the house. Obviously, because we weren't speaking, mm. I didn't know like, what was it going was on in your life, me right? Everywhere. It was, exactly. It wasn't, yeah. until, un- it wasn't until we had that conversation that I was like, oh, I don't, well, okay, I get how I feel, but I also don't mm. want you to like not really have anyone to kind of like it's, talk it's, to you about yeah, the that's situation the thing. That's you know what I mean thing. I think that's when we really started to speak and like yeah. things down a little bit but I think that was definitely like our most pivotal yeah period in our yeah. in our friendship but you know what like really before big. we move away from this yeah go on and actually I know a lot of young women watch this because this is the thing a lot of people do will like date people or yeah. they'll be getting to know people and everyone has different boundaries mm-hmm. and I know with my friends there's some things that I'm like now nah, I write off don't even want to deal with that person. They're like, no, no, it's cool. I can keep. But it's important if a friend is going to open up to you about a situation, and this isn't about you necessarily, but just in the more of the wider conversation, because we haven't really spoken about like dating relationships. Just mm. A quick nod Let's on talk it. Talk about that, should I? Go on. If a friend is going to open up to you about someone they're dating, and this goes back to communication, mm-hmm. yes, you can have your opinions about it. But I really think there is something to be said about like ha- harboring your opinions mm-hmm. on that person to the point where they feel like they can't even come to you anymore. Yeah. And that's really sad in itself. And, you know, that was, it's never happened before, but in, not to say it's never happened before. No, it never happened before. That was the first time I really experienced like your friends really not being happy with someone that you were with. Obviously, it, didn't, it doesn't last forever. People move past things, but it's just very overwhelming to be in that situation where it feels like everyone is like, no, 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 no. And you're just like, okay, can we just give it a minute, guys? Yeah, can I just like... Can I just... Can I just... I think beyond our personal growth, hmm. it's also important for us to like tackle or even just look at our our business growth, hmm. which has been like so interesting. When you look at, when we think about YouTube, it's because it's, it's where we started. Like it's, it's where everything kind of like grew or like hmm. spiraled in hmm. terms of like what we're doing now. How do you, reflecting on, like, everything that you've kind of done on YouTube, like, how do you see your personal growth now? How do you um, feel when you think about it? I think the the biggest indicator for me is that I'm self-taught and I learn watching YouTube videos. Mm. And it's quite crazy that other people are now learning from me. I think that's my biggest thing is, like, being able to, like, um, acquire knowledge and also pass it on. And, yes, it's taken, like, 11 years to get to the point where people mm. really, like, recognise me for that and really you know, associate me with such a a big face in like the beauty space in the UK, which is incredible. But there was a time where I was sitting watching people very much like me, do exactly what I'm doing, making my notes, buying everything that they were buying. And now to be in the position where people look at me in that way is so mind blowing. And it's not something that you, that I often sit and think about, but in this moment you can really reflect on it. And it's actually quite crazy when you sit and think about it in that way. But what is it for you? Because it would be quite different for you. Yeah, it would be. Um, I think for me, it's knowing that I was able to bring an idea. I had a platform available mm. for me to bring an idea that I had in my mind for years, mm. bring it to life and it be it turn into something. Mm. And I've just been able to continuously like grow it through just being able to like hustle mm. and like really hustle properly. Like it's really... It's interesting, like, you know this more than mm. anybody, like, it's not easy. It's, yeah, it's this def- thing, it's And do you know what, some what? people... It's not easy, it's crazy. And generally, it's very tough. Some people do have very, um, you know, smoother journeys, and they have easier uh, 
ways you know they they have like a quicker growth or they are quicker recognizable or they have like this one spurt that they just ride off the wave of but i think mm. the average creator really has to dedicate years years into it to really yeah. get no, no, to no. that it's, point it's, it's not easy like i think it's the the time dedication and being somebody was talking about how um if you do something especially on a platform like youtube for mm. over the course of like is it one year mm. like being able to like you look at your growth that's when you'll be able to really really see growth yeah, a lot yeah, of the yeah. time like we yeah. want fast-paced growth that's actually something my ex because i would um i would post on um, youtube is one that i get the most anxious about posting on mm. because it's also one that i've always struggled the most of consistency on mm. uh, just because of the nature of what it takes to put out before you even get to the point where you can upload the video work. it's mm. a lot of work so i remember i would often feel disheartened because when you've been away for a while it does take we all know this amongst us uh -huh. it takes a while to yeah. build that Hello. engagement back up what? and he was actually the one that told me you can't zoom in on the graph you have to zoom out because if Bruh. you zoom out on like five ten years you will see a growth but if you go in you're going to see like dips and like peaks and troughs even now like even you know ugh, mate if i even mm. go in on like my journey yeah Obviously, started YouTube, doing the episode. Mm. Here I am thinking that life is at my hand. Like mm. I can also upload episode and run away. Mm -mm. It doesn't work like mm -mm. that. Like with a, with a platform like this, like with a platform like YouTube, you have to you have king. to be consistent. Yeah. Like that's where you see the growth. And right now, I'm mm. like, oh, mm. I've been consistent here. This week, you're seeing the episode. Mm. You know what? And also that expectation that people mm. have on you to be able to like rely Reliable. on you, rely yeah. on you, and know that hey, this is my person, and she's coming back on mm. Tuesday to give me an episode, mm. and they're gonna talk about especially you know, if they're engaged it, and invested in your type of content exactly it's like so, i want it's another so conversation important. exactly yeah. and people and the great thing of, and this is the, what's so good about and healthy about long form content it's like you are like their comfort zone mm. one thing i i noticed that people were saying about your content actually i don't know if you picked up on this but in your no. comment you'll see yeah babe like a lot of people would always be like oh you're my con you're my comfort creator because they know That's especially beautiful. at that time that like yeah. you're their, their comfort they know yeah. that they can come back to you yeah they know they're going to find you on youtube and yeah. you're going to create a, a video for them that's longer than like 10 minutes that well Mind you. <laughs> Shorts, yes long form I, it's been a break from long form but shorts has been yeah it's it's a lot man it's definitely something i want i want to get back into which is why i really love being on youtube black um, oh my gosh, yes, you were both, we're both on YouTube We were Black. both on YouTube yeah. Black. It just really gives you like the space and the resources mm -hmm. to pull back into the platform. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole reason I wanted to be on YouTube Black because it really, I, my in intention was it to help me refocus back on the platform. Mm. Um, yeah. But it's tough because there is, it's not like back in the day when it was just YouTube and that was all there was. Yeah. There was so many different apps and platforms and spaces requiring your attention, whether yeah. that's online or in person. Mm -hmm. But I really admire creators like 90s Baby, just to give a completely different example to what we both do. Mm. 90s Baby that turn up every single week, every week you'll get a, a visual. Mm. And then on top of that, even shits and gigs, like they have their Patreon. So it's like additional content yeah. to what you're already getting. And they're just so consistent and they have been for years and years and years and years. Just to even double down on what you were saying about YouTube Black, because we were both a part of it, this mm. incredible initiative that YouTube put in place for black creators as much as like for you it was about like getting back into like the rhythm of you know posting consistently consistently mm. like on youtube etc i think for me it was then being able to like highlight like areas in myself that i was like really really oh i still am like extremely passionate about which mm. is like my presenting side mm. like the amount of opportunities same, same. girl the opportunities you know, let me tell you a play. funny story there's this from guy. them what go on there was this guy that he was like trying to talk to me a little bit blah 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 um, YouTube hired me to host an R&B night. Yeah, but it was mainly, I remember this. Yeah, it was mainly like music people, right? Yeah. And this guy works in music. So, you know, da da da, I had spoken to him like on a like couple occasions before then. Yeah. And then I saw him because YouTube had hired me to host the R&B night, yeah. which was absolutely amazing. I hosted it with DJ Ace. It was incredible. Abisola was on the on the deck. Um, <laughs> what? Wiki wiki. You don't kill me. Um, and this guy was there. And he was like, I said, oh, I was hosting it. He was like, oh, I know this. Oh, I thought that was the other presenter girl. I was like, who? Whoops out his phone. He's like, this girl. I said, no, that's Wumi Bella. Not my pseudonym. I said, that's Wumi Bella, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm screaming, no, but I, I love no. the initiative like so much. I think yeah. one of my biggest highlights from that was the wireless. Yes, I like, remember I, seeing you. Yeah, and you host so that amazing. was really good. That was so amazing. It's, really, it's the really opportunities, good. listen, yeah. like opportunities yeah. are not are not to play in this. Yeah. It's beautiful whenever a platform is able to recognise like areas that you're also amazing yeah. at and being able to like yeah. do double down YouTube on that a lot more. Because they focus on black 
creators Creators, and I feel like oftentimes in this industry we are overlooked because generally we tend to have like smaller platforms than our like white counterparts but that's typically because they get to be platform more so Mm. it's so refreshing to have a program that is focused on platforming and really propelling black talent yeah man it was it, honestly big up youtube every time because every that was incredible you tell them time. i want i literally i remember me my manager and i were like yeah you know uche really wants to like really get more into like her presenting, presenting bag yeah. they said all right say no more we'll do that and that's the thing yeah. like you say something and, and they, they like, take yeah. the action to actually yeah. like bring it yeah. bring it forward to you because yeah. this year you've done a lot so of yeah. many and that was things m- so many things majority so through them watch. yeah do you know one thing that one moment i really loved actually and we never really did anything about it and i was like fuming at you and i was like babe like you're on 200k or more on youtube oh, oh my god far past 200k no at the time at the time oh, when the 200k when did happened that we were living together at the time that it happened Oh, were we? You don't remember? No, babe. And I, and you were like, yeah, yeah. This is the da, issue da, 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 with da. doing it for so long on metrics because I don't focus on metrics as like key, like shaken moments. Two hundred k, yes, it is an achievement. Um, two hundred k, yes, is, it is an achievement. But because my main focus isn't on growth, and I've always been very much community. community which is why YouTube was so important to me, I'm far more interested in whether people are not engaged in my content and and I'm sure you'd be the same, like whether or not people took something away from this conversation, whether they were really dialed into what my guest and I were saying, then it has 500K views or I got 10K followers from it. If you've got 10K followers and no one connected with what you were saying, then to me, it's What's like, the it's obsolete. There's no point. And I think that's the core thing. And one thing we've always spoken about mm. that, it depends what you're, where you're at with your journey. Mm. You know, are you in a space where you want to grow? Are you in a space where you Growth want to build phase, a harvest, engagement you know, phase. Um, community? Yeah, community There's different phase. phases. Yeah. And there's different things that you need to do or like know how to do mm. when you're in. I actually learned that from you. Mm. Like, I, I, you know, I, I like always say to Uche, you know, I'm I like, my phases. listen, she, she is like, one thing about Uche and I can't wait for her to like get into... The element of this, like it's your, we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but like your, your business side of things, because you're yeah. incredible at it. But just to summarize, when it comes to content in general, like it's so important to like double down more so on the content creating mm. on YouTube, like mm. the content that you are creating rather than mm. like the metrics mm. that it's getting in that, in that moment, you know, mm. you just go at it and you go at it mm. and you, it's inevitable for you to like see the growth mm. and see, see the places and the, the spaces it's going to take you into, you know? Mm. 100. Obviously you've spoken about community over metrics. Mm-hmm. Do you see that in real life it's particularly because you have an oh online gosh. show yeah so you know how does that translate for you oh my god like so much because especially with maybe because i've been like i was saying like consistency is everything mm. this year i feel like that's been like my thing to focus on ensuring that i'm pouring mm. and pouring and the way people are being able to like take away so much from my episodes and the things that they say to me in real life now mm. it's just so much more different Give us like examples. The, there was a babe that came up to me the other day she was like girl oh my god it was so cute she was like babe like my pastor played your episode like a moment what yeah you know the clip oh, that from he, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah yes yes so there was a clip that we posted on youtube shorts that it's gone crazy where um the sarah the person i i spoke to last yeah. she was talking about her her experience uh, just her her overall experience and she was saying that her pastor ended up playing it in their church and as an example of why prayer is such an important thing mm. she was talking about not being able to like cast a spell on mm. on a guy because his mother's prayers were mm. holding him oh yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. like hearing that like can you imagine like an episode that i did like a a, a conversation that you know i created and yeah. like i put out there is now going to someone's church That's as like crazy. an example of you know something so important especially yeah. where why you know what i mean like yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, like this is this yeah, is my yeah, this yeah. is my thing this yeah, is my group yeah, you know yeah. so i think it, it's in those wow. moments you're like wow like it's so important for me to like yeah. double down on this yeah. and create and create create and you know create from a meaningful place and create yeah. from like a, a space of intention i think that's why i'm enjoying content creating so oh so, like i'm enjoying doing this show so much more this year you yeah yeah, yeah girl yeah, yeah, it's been like yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a, it's been a journey yeah it's been a journey for sure wow obviously we've both been in each other's lives now mm. and we've gone through this big transition together where we've lived mm. together i think our our really we're both in a space in our life individually where it's like an enjoyment phase like mm. we're enjoying our journeys and mm. it's a beautiful thing to watch but if we're thinking about our relationships as you know two individuals who mm. who've now who have a relationship now how would you describe how how our relationship has evolved over time 
and where we are now in our relationship. I'm going to throw it to you. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind. I'm going to throw it to you, mainly because I feel like um, my takeaway is quite small. Okay, I think, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I think, thinking about mine, I feel like our relationship is actually in a really, I I really love our friendship Mm. now. I feel like, interesting, because recently I feel the urge Mm. that like we actually need to spend or i want to spend a lot more time Mm. with you (laughs) not that i have (laughs) because you know what because i'm like oh my god i feel like now i feel yeah the the absence absence. yeah yeah yeah, 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 like now i feel the absence i'm like right like i i be like Maybe I think in hindsight, obviously you notice things a lot more mm. when you no longer live with someone mm. or when you're when you're not in each other's like space. Oh, that's nice. And now I'm like, oh my god, I remember we used to do this. Oh my god, Aww. I would have like little moments where maybe certain things might come up. It might be yeah. a young blue song or like something, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. you know what we? And also just even thinking about how we are when we are in like social environments together. Oh yeah, it's, unden- it's yeah, an yeah. undeniable it's like, vibe. Guys. Like it's just like where yeah, we go yeah. off into our own bubbles yeah, and yeah, it's such yeah, a beautiful for experience. Sure, for sure, yeah. So I feel like I really love where our relationship is yeah. at now. I feel like we have a beautiful understanding of each other. Definitely. There was something that you said at your birthday dinner the other day where um, the girls, I don't know what sparked the conversation, but mm. you were like, yeah, no, me and women are definitely the most alike. Like when you were oh, yeah, yeah. your, your People friendships. People argue most alike. I was like, yeah, women and I are probably the most alike, yeah. Yeah, because we are. We're yeah. both about what we're Absolute about. Absolutely insane. Bulldogs. In- yeah, yeah, bulldogs. We're bulldogs. <laughs> wild, intelligent, insatiable individuals like word. yeah insatiable, insatiable yeah. for sure yeah yeah and we just we don't do surface and i really love that yeah it's it's very much like a depth thing and actually that's what i really love about a friendship because it could be like a random tuesday and I, and like one of us will call the other one like <laughs> talking about nothing about some what? bs what? What? and then it's we'll like, turn it around and then be like well then what we've learned <laughs> is that like Everybody is mad, and that's just okay. It's okay. Oh, it's so funny. No. And because we both wake up early, it's like with some friends I know yeah. I can't call you before. So, but with you, I'm like, also my other friend actually. We had one mad deep conversation <laughs> at like seven o'clock in the morning, and that's the kind of like what is that? Like if it's like seven, I'm be like, what? Yeah, hello. Let me it just is, run you through some time. absolutely rubbish. Because no with some people, it's like a text. Oh, let me call you tomorrow, kind of thing. Or let's like chat. But it's like in the moment, I'm like, girl. Hello. 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 But the, you know what I love though when we do have conversations whenever like things happen in our lives mm. and I think I don't know if you've noticed this but our response to thing is very much like well it, it is, is what it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both like be like no, we'll like we'll go back and forth and we'll be like well <laughs> it is what it is. I can't everyone, everyone's mad. Like, yeah. Everyone's mad. No we'll be like everyone's mad and I'll be like well Uche have a good day. She'll be like well have a good day. We'll be like yeah they're all Stay mad. Stay safe it's, out there. It's all and right. Like, <laughs> and then that's it. And then we won't talk about that situation again and I really no, love that because I'm like it's it's always nice to have a literally. friend that like you both kind of operate in the same yeah. wavelength yeah, yeah, like you, yeah. you understand things yeah. you just kind of like yeah. we I feel like we don't hold on to things too no, much we and just we don't think take it put it out that's it it's very really rare that we come back to situations. things that have occurred like yeah, it is what like, it is yeah, cool. what like, is what would you say just to round things up right what would you say has been the biggest lesson or the biggest takeaway from us living together or even you know what I actually want to know what would you have done differently if anything nothing you know yeah same nothing what's been your biggest takeaway um, communicating definitely. Yeah. And also, do you know what? Communicating um, tailored to your friend. Mm. Because I think before I lived with you, I took like a one step approach with a lot of people, with most friendships. And actually, a lot of our friendships evolved in the time that we were living together, not because yeah. we were living together, just because that's just the nature of friendships. So, like, the lessons I was getting from that, and also like the lessons of, and you know, I feel like you might watch this and think, oh my God, they really were like at it all the time. But it wasn't, we lived together for like a year and a half and in that time yeah. maybe we had two big pivotal moments. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of that, it was th- like, what is that like maybe a percentage of the time that we lived together um, and to have so much growth from such a short percentage of like conflict for lack mm. of a better word. But I think a lot of the growth which we haven't actually spoke about came from the good times yeah. and came from the depth yeah. and came from the like appreciation of like having that person then being able to have someone where you could just come home and be like, this is it. This is what's happened today. Yeah. Or you could just wake up in the morning or you come home from like, maybe you've had a conversation with someone else and you come home and you just need to like chop it up with someone else yeah. that's not involved in it. Mm-hmm. Or you just have a phone call with someone and you're just thinking, you just knock on the door and you just think like, 
you can I know I you're going to you, hear me. Yeah, can I yeah. talk to you for a minute or like just to rationalise what's in your head? Mm -hmm. And there were so many moments of just like, I just need a bit of clarity. And not because that person, like not because you're going to be like, oh, you're right and they're wrong. Just because it's like, okay, let's both reflect on this situation. Mm -hmm. And I know this is where you're coming from, but maybe this is where they're coming from. Yeah, and we always, and we always did that. I yeah. think when you were saying that, you know what came to mind? The day that we were talking about the calendar thing and we were like, yeah Let, we basically there was a day when everything was kind of going crazy we were like you know what let's look at what our life is going to be like in a, a year, year from now and we chose a date in the calendar at the end of it was at the end of the year yeah. and we said we we're going to review it yeah and look where life took us yeah and interestingly enough like we were in the same position thank god no we were we were so far, so far away from so where far. we were at that yeah. point and i think that is the beauty of this that you know in all of it i feel like we maybe we didn't know this at the mm. time but we were always constantly there for mm. each other when mm. a lot of like big moments were happening yeah. things were changing for sure. like even oh my gosh the twitter thing the twitter situation do you remember and i was thinking Baby. i was like, okay. I was like she okay. said are you, are you okay, okay? <laughs> I was like, are you okay? You know, just so many moments yeah. that I think when you're living with someone, a lot of the time people might think that you don't need to be, yes, it's not by force for you to yeah. be there for that person or for you to hear them. But I think that's what the essence of life is about. Yeah. And I think that's why we were destined to kind of live together because mm. we, one thing we allowed is for our, us, one thing we allowed in our relationships for us to allow our growth to happen individually. Like mm. you never imposed anything on me and I didn't mm. impose things on you. Mm. You saw things and you allowed me to like grow into the mm. things that you saw. And mm. in the same way I mm. saw things and I allowed you to grow into the things that I saw in mm. you, you know, and I think, 100%. and I don't think a lot of people know how to do that, but I yeah. feel like that was one of the things that really solidified our relationship. But it's, because... a, it's a privilege to be able to live with a friend and it's a privilege to be able to be in close proximity to someone and be in close proximity to their life. It really is a blessing to yeah. have that window into someone else's life and come out of the other side of it stronger because a lot yeah, of people don't have don't... that. So right? it really is a, it's a blessing. Bro, we honestly. made it out and we are still here. Yeah, even the opportunity to get... Because a lot of people want to live with their friends and have that young, you know, you're in your 20s, you're living with your close friend, you're just chopping up life. And a lot of people don't have that. So to have that in itself was really like, yeah, it was a privilege. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. It was yeah. an experience of a lifetime. And I feel yeah. like when we talk about you know things being destined mm, that for sure for was, sure for sure for sure because we grew sure. man that was yeah. like our adulting Ooh, we came out of that as like that yeah, kitchen we're island saw some conversation Forever. and even Forever. we didn't even touch about like having our other friends in the in the flat oh my god and how nice yeah. that was just to like my friends over like your friends yeah. over in times when we had like both group, our friends over things, like games and playing and no it was so good breaking yeah the freaking, oh my gosh what, anyway, and what again there was a, just a lot there was just a lot but anyway yeah. that was that was our experience living yeah. together before we round things is there anything that you'll say just to, the last question before we go into yeah bellow box for anyone who wants to live with a friend what mm. is like your one advice for them when i will give my own one um uh, my one advice would be to be um open-minded mm. Be open, not even just open-minded, just be open. Even if someone that you think you know really well, it's very different knowing someone on the outside, even if it's like someone you're really close with versus living with them. I had friends that I lived with in uni that would probably have maybe like, one thing that used to annoy people is I'm very much a morning person. Yeah. Which <laughs> maybe you might not know this about, but as in morning to the point that I'm like opening your door like morning. But you, it was fine. That was like because we're both us, morning. We're both like that. Yeah. But if your friend isn't a morning person, you're like it got to a point yeah. where people would lock their doors because they're like you're not about to come in here on some good morning at seven a.m. So yeah, just be open. Yeah. Even if someone that you really already know very well. Yeah. I think mine would be honestly. I know this is so cliche, but like just being present and mm. knowing that this is like a one in a lifetime experience mm. because it's not every and it's day that finite you, like yeah. it's just not every day that you kind of experience this and i think that's what i've come to realize after mm. us living together because now i'm like oh my gosh I miss that i miss that like mm. I, I miss the moments the where we'll, you know i will wake up in the morning and be making breakfast right and i'll be like oh Uche, i made this you remember when i made you freaking pancakes and you, you did like, make, yeah it was very like, cute honestly, or when you make jollof and mac and cheese like Ooh. honestly just being present Good and being times. able to take that yeah. moment in it's like a every part of life is like an experience and mm. needs to, it needs to be exactly what mm. it needs to be so just take just it in there man take yeah. it in take Enjoy every moment it. of it in so to round things off we're going to play a little game well actually let's find out what's going to happen so i've got the bellow box let me grab bellow this box. young lady double b's double b the big the big b let's not even get into the fact that i didn't know your favorite color was pink honestly i don't understand it I makes just, a lot of sense for you, but it's just not something that I knew. I just don't understand. Like, obviously, my favorite color is pink. Yours is purple. Right? No. Blue. No. What the heck? White, black. I don't have a favorite color. It's black, though. But I do wear a lot of black. 
But I told you it's was pastel right. colours. Oh, shoot. Okay, cool. So Remember I said pastel blues. You did say that. You did. All right, so cool. So what I've got today is... Oh, they were for the Bello Boy. Yes, babe. What I've got today is for us to answer some questions. Let's some this do it. Or that question. I actually had some help from our people online to kind of send me some of their cues. Okay. So I'll actually start with some of the things that they sent us. Okay. All right, first question being, who's most likely to leave the party early? Me. Yeah. Well, Ooh, yeah. You have now, because you're like, I'm going to go see my man, my man. Yeah, but back yeah, in the day, yeah, I'm, I'm like, girl, you ready to go home or what? And I'm like, no, Jessica, you <laughs> talking to me over there. I need to go and see Jessica quickly. Okay, okay, what? And you're so, like, yeah. where have you I'm gone like, wrap again? This up, wrap all of these socializations. Wrap up the socializations. <laughs> all right, who's most likely to want to cook versus cook out? Oh, you cook. I would want to cook. I order. You order. order. Yeah. But you also have your moment of cooking. I love though. cooking. You're a good cook. But Very if it's cook. like we all come together, just less order. Make it easy. Who? Okay. Who is most likely to blast music first thing in the morning? That one this is me. It's one okay. right here. I accept the life that God like, has given me. I can't help it. I'm so sorry. Who's most likely to bring a man home? That's both of us not really but you if know we look at the it's um, a home for a reason right people should enter the homes you know that's it's fine. that's all you babes that's I me respect you know it is you. what it is who's most likely to forget to pay a bill neither of us oh wait as in like not in a restaurant no like no, a just phone bill pay, like a house bill I don't, I don't think, think we really had that we us. just yeah. kind of like sorted out our bill stuff only because i else. say you had like a whole bunch of um fines but you didn't forget oh you just didn't know about them god. and they were charging oh my her god. by the day. oh my god so what's the point of driving in london is actually the question i have for the world i just, i got to a point now where i'm just like i just don't want to drive i just don't want to drive because i leave my house i actually second. haven't seen you in your car in a minute no, do you still I have it <laughs> I haven't seen that car in a minute. <laughs> she downstairs, but I do. I am very. No, no but I feel I you. I get on trains no. now, Ooch. And like, this is real before, gross. Before, oh my god. I was gonna I ask, should we get on the train? One time we got on the train, she was like, oh my god, it's so loud. <laughs> I, we will be going to Central and she'll be like yeah let's, let's get on the, the train. train I'm like we're not doing that I just want to drive there she'll be like where do you park it's so quick and this is where I get fines because yeah, I just want to drive everywhere. anywhere but now I think this year you yeah. know the fines have they done the what they need to do and it's enough save the environment it's amen do you get it yeah hallelujah give Ooch. God the glory thank you for coming and thank you for doing this we've come this. to the end yeah <laughs> No, we've come. We've come to the end of the conversation. Wow. It's been amazing. I'm proud. So this was good. so good. I would say give me a hug, but I'm like really sweating. But like, let's like. I hugs. <laughs>